All of you wanting to learn about accounting. Welcome to this video. Today, I will continue illustrating our series on the fundamentals of accounting by showing the importance of the balance sheet, this time talking about the liabilities and stockholders' equity. The video will guide you with examples, assuming the existence of a factory named Shoes On. Don't forget to share this video with a friend that it's eager to learn as much as you. Are you ready? Let's go! In our last video, I showed along with examples, the asset part of the balance sheet. Today, I'll illustrate, the offsetting part of the balance sheet, by talking about liabilities, and stockholders, or owners, equity. According to the framework of the International Financial Reporting Standards, known as IFRS, a liability, is a present obligation of the enterprise, arising from past events, the settlement of which, is expected to result in an outflow, from the enterprise of resources embodying economic benefits. So, we can say that, liabilities, are the company's obligations, and are amounts owed to others, as off the balance sheet date. They are settled over time, through the transfer of economic benefits, including money, goods, or services. On the balance sheet, companies, book liabilities, in opposition to assets, and as for, they book it, as credits. The balance sheet, reports a company liability, as off the date noted in the heading of the balance sheet. Liabilities, are a vital aspect of a company, because they are used to finance operations, and pay for large expansions. We can distinguish three types of liabilities. 1. Current liabilities, which are a company's short-term financial obligations, that are due within one year, as for example accounts payable, and taxes payable. 2. Non-current liabilities, or often referred as long-term, which are obligations, listed on the balance sheet, not due for more than a year, as for example bonds payable, leases, and pension obligations. 3. Contingent liabilities, which are liabilities that may occur, depending on the outcome of a future event. Therefore, contingent liabilities are potential liabilities, as per example, lawsuits and product warranties. Let's imagine that, Richard, an active and successful entrepreneur in his region, decided to add, to his group company's portfolio, a shoes factory, named, Shoes On. In order, to finance his factory, he received a loan from his bank. The loan, that he received from his bank, is divided, between a nominal amount and interests, and both, are in fact liabilities, to be recorded in the balance sheet. The nominal value, of the loan, will be recorded as notes payable or loan payable, and the interest on the loan he owes, will be recorded as interest payable. Also, Richard, will need to buy material to produce the shoes and machinery for assembly them. As he buys on credit, these items will be recorded on the account's payable account. Payment for the wages that he owns, to employees, will also be necessary, and are to be recorded on the wages payable account. Now, assuming, the factory is up and running, and customer orders start to arrive, other obligations will arise. Let's say, Richard Factory, or as we named it initially, Shoes On, signs a contract, with one of its customers, in which the customer agrees to pay $1,000 in advance, for the delivery of 100 items per month, for the next three months. The customer, pays $1,000 on March 1st, for the period between March 1st and May 31st. On an accounting perspective, Despite that, Shoes On, has received the money on March 1st, the company, is still not entitled to recognize the revenue, as it still did not earn it, as the shoes were not delivered to the customer. It has a three-month deadline, to deliver 100 shoes per month, or return the money. So here, the obligation is coming, from the situation, 
where the money was received before the money was truly earned. On his balance sheet, shoes on will have to show that its asset cash rose by $1,000 on March 1st, but it will also have to show that it has a $1,000 liability by recording an entry in unearned revenue on March 1st. Unearned revenue is the money paid to a business in advance before it actually provides goods or services to a client. As each month passes and the 100 shoes items are delivered, shoes on will earn $333, which is $1,000 divided by three months, and as a result, $333 will be transferred each month from unearned revenue to revenues. Loans, interest, wages, provision, leases, accounts payable, unearned revenue and accrued expenses are considered as the main balance sheet liabilities. As we continue with our series, I will be covering the ones not mentioned on today's video. Now, let's talk about the third section of a corporation's balance sheet. If we mention a corporation, stockholders equity is the third component of a company's balance sheet. What is often referred as the book value of a corporation is also known as stockholders' equity. However, if we mention a sole proprietorship, then owner's equity will be the third component. The difference between the asset and liabilities levels is equal to the amount of stockholders' equity. As a result, stockholders' equity is frequently referred by accountants as the difference of assets minus liabilities. Within the stockholders' equity section, you may see accounts such as common stock, preferred stock, retained earnings, current year's net income, accumulated other comprehensive income, paid in capital and treasury stock. The link between a company's balance sheet and income statement can be explained as follows. 1. When the corporation issues shares of stock, in return for cash, the account common stock will be increased. 2. When the company makes a profit, retained earnings will increase. 3. If a company makes a net loss, then retained earnings will decrease. As a note, if there's as well a large debt liability, it may indicate an oncoming bankruptcy for that business. As a result, revenues will automatically cause an increase in stockholders' equity and expenses will automatically cause a decrease in stockholders' equity. This metric is frequently used by analysts and investors to determine a company's general financial health. However, shareholder equity alone is not a definitive indicator of a company's financial health. It's worth mentioning this because the corporation's assets are represented at cost or lower, rather different than market value, and it's crucial not to confuse the stated amount of stockholders' equity with the company's market value. To determine a corporation's market value, you should hire an expert that specializes in company valuation. Let me know on the comment section below if you now understand the concept of unearned revenue and the obligations that remain after signing a contract with a customer. In the next video, I'll be sharing the accounting fundamentals on the statement of cash flows. I hope you can join me there. If you have enjoyed, want to keep on learning and still did not subscribe to the channel, you can do it today by clicking on the subscribe button below. Thanks for watching and I will see you again soon.